Right. Everyone, welcome. I think this should be a pretty quick meeting as a whole. Can I get somebody to fill in? Oh, David, I uh, haven't. We begin this meeting by acknowledging the land in which we gather this traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. The territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the dish with one spoon one agreement. Today is the gathering place and is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. And acknowledging reminds us our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of the Indigenous people. We do. Uh, friends, do we have any declarations of interest? All right, can I get someone to put forth a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. All right, first and second. Sorry, there was a person. I was going. Here and <laughs> okay. okay, so we'll put forth the motion to accept the minutes from April. All right, since uh, updates with financials, Byron isn't here, Rachel, do you have any specific measure for No, um, and unless there's any questions that people want me to address in my areas or the drastic changes to slots. No, just um, you see the money coming in for grants. Those are predominantly grants from last year that were just finally recouping. So it's not that we've got new grants. Don't get too excited. We'll just about that. All right. In that case, sir, can I get an events update? Yes. Um, so, Holy Festival, the Road Closure will only be on the east end of Big Fall. Sorry, really quickly, just quickly scaling back to financials. Did we get the motion just to accept them? Oh, sorry. My apologies. No worries. Can I get one? Sir. Can we? Yeah. Can we yeah. And then we just do a quick any opposed or any of that stuff. Sure. Any opposed on the accepting Perfect. Thank you. Let's do that for the rest. All right. Uh, for okay. Holy Festival of Road Closure will only be the east end of St. Paul. Um, the block party is moving along really nicely. Brian to work with Jason Delat to secure um, some stage sponsors in addition to their title sponsorships. Um, for most of the stages, the last that Brian and I have chatted about it, there were two secured and they were about to approach a third. Rachel might have some insight on whether that third was secured. And not yet. Okay, so that's in the works. Um, several businesses have opted uh, in to program entertainment for the Friday night, July 14th. So that's officially making it a two day festival. The last time we updated you all, we had decided to go ahead with two days. Uh, but businesses is being on board to host entertainment, we can make that a reality. Um, we also created some thorough and comprehensive contracts with stage managers for block parties, as well as market organizers for all of the events. Uh, that will ensure that everything is absolutely transparent and everyone and everything is covered. In um, any questions so far? Just a quick question. Um, Friday and Saturday, when is Friday street closure? And There's no street closure for the Friday. It's just two events, but no two day closure. Is it? I'm sorry, say it again. There's no street closure for the Friday, just the Saturday. So, oh, so Friday's with in house? Yep. Yeah, so, oh. in different businesses um, hosting entertainment for the evening. Um, but there's so there's no street closure. Okay. Yeah. But it did open up to grant opportunities. Yes, it did. That's why we pivoted to the two day. And I like to kind of like in the restaurants too. So, it kind of brings them in more housing. People love that. That's yeah, and retail is welcome to have entertainment as well. And like, it's not just would it be during the day or is it more evening based? Evening, okay. Yeah. Um, so the next member workshop is on garbage. Lindsay is coordinating a workshop to update members regarding changes to garbage and recycling legislation. And um, in, at the events committee, we talked about a second or lock song training. Members of the event committee were interested in attending. Uh, there were a very small number of board members who attended our last one. We were ordered by the STDA staff and our staff. So if anybody would like to 
join us for a uh, second box on training. I found it to be extremely enlightening. I thought it was amazing. It was really great. And it wasn't even so much like I've watched videos on how to administer naloxone and I didn't learn anything in that training that I didn't already know from that. It was just the insight into um, the people that are in our community that are struggling. It was really, really enlightening and I think that it's great for everyone. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Done that training from the puzzle. Yeah, they're, and they're like sharing really interesting information. Like, there's never been a reported transmission of um, HIV from like a discarded needle. Like that can't happen. So myth busting stuff like that, um, which is really interesting. I was gonna say, wandering through is interested in hosting uh, lots of training. So if that ends up and wants to combine with. Um, our next one, and then maybe open it to some public members as well. And yeah, yeah, great, cool, fantastic. So, are, do shopkeepers have an optional package in their shops? Um, several do. That's something that you can get through the training, or you can go to any pharmacy and just pick one up. Yeah, I, I understand that. I, yeah. uh, the question so, is, and do if, other shops do pay for mm -hmm. so I don't, shopkeepers? So if I may, if certain industries have to have naloxone on site by law, so that is construction and I believe um, the um, bars for because of a high risk associated with it. Um, so as a result, a lot of our restaurants and bars are practically getting lots of training and kids to have on hand just because they are also seeing people in the restrooms. It, it's much better to have a kit and save a life, then deal with it, adapt to your business. One of the other things they mentioned in the training, which I don't want to spoil the good stuff, but they mentioned how most all, not good stuff, you know what I mean, most all um, recreational drugs have a little bit of fentanyl in it now. So even if that's not something typically that you would see in your business, like if there's someone who can you know, use any recreational drug use, they're, they're more at a higher risk than they would have been 10 years ago. Um, so even if it's not a nightlife uh, establishment or whatever, like you just, it's worth not having someone die because mm -hmm. it's changed. And it gives you signs too, like if someone is, yeah, I didn't do that as opposed to like spraying it up their nose. For yeah. yeah, yeah. I have underestimated this legislation myself. Me uh, and directly, uh, the contract is a work that says it as of a Friday. Everything it doesn't matter if the elevator maintenance people, anything with construction, I have to be here to attend. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's one of the highest rates, right? They were saying is in construction. I, I'm also, um, I sit on the board for community addiction services in Niagara, and Niagara um, is only second to Toronto in number of overdoses. Um, and that's not per capita, that's in sheer number. So we are trailing Toronto, um, which is pretty horrifying. Did you say sheer numbers? Sheer numbers, not per capita. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's scary. It is scary, it is. And to be honest, like we don't have the capacity in our region to really, so if we can support in any way as like community members, it makes a big difference. Uh, anything else on the events? Uh, I don't have anything else unless anybody has any questions. Just one other thought. When I was, just an idea, uh, when I was knocking doors, tw three times people said, let's have a, a fair on the main street. So, you know, like rides and those kind of things. You Balloons and all that good stuff. So, three people were up for having more activity on St. Paul Street, like Ferris wheel, whatever. They had, they had a Ferris wheel for in the soil one year. So, it can be done. I don't anyway, know. Anyway, that was just an idea. Yeah, I think that, I mean, that was kind of the base idea for Bam Jam, but it didn't. We didn't get the funding to make that happen, but um, maybe it's like, yeah, maybe maybe down the road. That's the thing we did. The street party. The be? block party. Well, the block party can merge with Bam Jam this year, but we really don't have a lot of funding beyond 
<laughs> we're like we're looking for um, free activations and activation sponsors for like family friendly activities. So we definitely don't have the uh, the budget for that, but. Unless we get some really killer uh, activation sponsors, oh, yay, that would be great. Yeah, so I just yeah. think of like a fair downtown, like coffee cater for all multiple yeah. too. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Is that like an online ride? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I like the idea of a Ferris wheel downtown. So it's <laughs> fun. Please. It's fun. Night on the downtown. Yeah, and I can find out from. And the soil people more about how they how they use how they made that happen. If they had a sponsor like that, just maybe yeah, just yeah. maybe yeah. event themed it. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Yeah, lots of. So thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, also you that, that you reached out, like, also that you reached out and talked to me. That's a good thing. Oh yeah, no, I, oh, I, yeah. I was actually was saying before the meeting, uh, the people I talked to were very excited about. Stuff, let's get on and do stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the ideas were all over the place. I loved going out and like in and like I went to places that I probably wouldn't have gone into, and some of their ideas were great. And just like bringing people in and collabing with different companies. So, if it's kind of old with rides and stuff like that, they usually set up for like four to seven days when they set up. Yeah, okay, they don't set up for like a day and an hour or two. And do it. It's yeah, four to seven. You're probably right, because you like more like, you know, the general day or whatever. But there might be like a company that runs out one-offs. So like maybe the only thing we had was a Ferris wheel and had a bunch of other cool non-Ferris or carnival related things. Just adding one. They get like even like a whole foodie. Yeah. So we're charging them on the fee already. Yeah. So Gregor um is also starting that hot dog cart business. I don't know if anyone's familiar. St. Kitty's hot dogs. Very fun um, branding. Very like old school. So we had like vendors like that where um, where they were floating the idea of a supper market with the corner lot there. So we integrated with that. I don't know. I think we're all just <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Sarah, get to your notes. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But it might not have to be having only strictly through CIA. Yeah. All right. Uh, so is Daniel's with us? Uh, no. All right. Sure. All right. Uh, executive committee updates. There isn't one. That's the update. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing new. All right. Uh, on to screen today of sustainability. Uh, Jen can't join us today. She sends her regrets. Uh, there are these two new initiatives that we're going out. Yeah, yeah, so we've got um, two new interns who started, the previous two have finished, um, and we've, we, mostly as Lindsay, um, recently did a submission to the Inclusive Community Grant Program. We're waiting to hear back if we're successful in that. Um, she also recently presented to the International Association for Great Lakes Research Conference, um, and was really one of the only urban presenters, so it really puts the class that's good. Um, and then she's attending the Niagara Climate Change Summit next week. Um, and we'll be presenting um, kind of this little sheet on tips and tricks for greening downtown. So if anybody wants to see one, let us know. Um, and then she is also working on a James Street planned sponsorship opportunity. So we have some little sheets talking about that. If you know anyone that may be interested, in being a sponsor for those James Street planters, just so we can beautify that area a little bit more, that would be great. Really, really cheap, about thousand dollars. You get the planters all in, you get the signage, all that kind of jar. Um, and the last couple ones, um, we've got two cleanups planned: one for June twenty third, one for July fourteenth downtown. And then we also recently obtained sponsorship for our Pike Valley um, infrastructure. So we've got Pike Valley at all of our. And that's the AA. What are the cleanup dates? Um, June 23rd and July 14th. Are we targeting? 14th, yeah. Are they targeting the specific? Um, June 23rd will be targeting mostly the East End, and July 14th will be predominant. They're right before our events. So it's our way to kind of spruce up the downtown for the event, though they will probably be focusing on those areas. No. Of where the events are. Okay. 
And what is that like? Road cleaning. It's the basically I'm doing a call out to volunteers, depending on how many volunteers we get, is how thorough we can be. It can go as far as sweeping up garbage off the sidewalks, sweeping up cigarette butts, taking posters down of holes, um, that kind of stuff is our usual. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever heard of Eco Defender? I have. So they, they're an organization that would like do a similar thing at no cost. They have folded, but they may have a volunteer list that is interesting. Like that. So okay. good. Okay. Do you have a contact pen? I will get you. Eco Defender. Mm -hmm. Again, they don't exist anymore. But, but there must people be people yeah, yeah, exactly. That were like in there too, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is, is there anything else for street teams? Yeah. All right, marketing. Uh, kind of super productive marketing subcommittee meeting last week or week before? May 15th. It's already the end of May. That's super fun. <laughs> Um, so we set up some subcommittees, which is really exciting. Um, a 50th anniversary subcommittee um, to do some marketing around the 50th, 50th anniversary thing. Um, a communication strategy subcommittee. So we're, the aim of that subcommittee is to create a comprehensive communication strategy for Kat to be able to um, execute some of the big ideas that she has um, in a way that's a little because she has so much on her plate day to day in terms of like just execution and um requesting new businesses, creating like a, something that she can filter it through to make a lot of easier because she works really hard at it a lot. Um, looking to hire someone to help uh bring the website up to date, not up to date, there's some broken things within it right now. Um, that I would be on the capabilities of in-house staff so hiring someone to help train with that um what else is there the gift card program we're waiting to receive designs back um and then that will be up and running soon um and do you guys want to pedestrian kiosks right now at all sure um so we had a pitch from a company and i company to um offer some pedestrian kiosks down the town to us for free um a digital sign um that would potentially replace our current pedestrian kiosks that are a little worse for wear. Um, so this is currently up for debate. We had a meeting with them this morning. They are the open, <laughs> to be honest. But you can thank them for the funds. Um, so there, I mean, there, the benefits are there's no cost. Um, we could get technically a pedestrian counter or some kind of um, boat sniffing to get data and so forth, which would be a huge window for us. Um, on a number of them, we can put our maps up on one side, we get a rotating ad on the other. So there's some benefits. There's also some negatives. So this is an advertising kiosk, which means it's a rotating ad. We did ask if we would have any say over the ads, we'd have limited say. So the risk is you may see, it, it makes the downtown more commercialized, right? They would be looking for about nine to 10 to be installed, which is a lot more than I had thought. Uh, so it, anyway, the plan of where it goes next steps is that we're gonna bring it back to the marketing committee to share the update of what they share with us, and then it will be kind of up to the marketing to say yay or nay, but we're probably leaning to an A. It's at con. So can you, like, so can you need to have like nine different we get, physical ones of them. We would get one in seven advertisements. So we were, the Josh, Kat, and I were told right before the meeting. Um, do you know if there's any opportunity to negotiate what those terms are? I think so. Because yeah, they seem to be open to that. I think if we could have more control over, like, that could be really great for sponsorship or whatever. Like, yeah. if, if we go back to terms that are advantageous for us, mm -hmm. maybe it's not. A hard no, yeah. but I feel like they would, they're not going to be that flexible as mailing concerns. Yeah, compared to free. Actually, yeah, free. We actually have yeah, <laughs> right. They're like it's free, but you have to do what we say. Yeah. So there's, they, there's I, I, getting I, I think at the end of the day, they want to make money from the ads, right? So I think as long as we can show them a, a revenue base that meets, that fits our 
what we want to do. Because let's be honest, we don't really want to see Walmart and Penn Center advertising on these jobs. But if money and Penn Center are going to see also real estate, you're doing well. Yeah. That's it's examples of fun, like. Like, but if there's a way that we could work with our partners, so maybe the city gets two ads, maybe the PAC gets an ad, maybe the Meridian Center gets an ad. And if we can kind of make sure that it's saturated with downtown focus for the ads, I think that's the way to win it, is just getting that commitment. And they would be looking for an anchor commitment. Which board member gets an ad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy. So they're in total control of the ads? Yeah. They would allow us some restriction because I did ask that. I, I basically said that we wouldn't want the Penn Center advertising money. So they said that's fine. You can have some say. So we don't know how much say. Yeah. And also how well they live up to it. Yeah. But why don't they Did you think that the Penn Center is taking away from downtown? No. It's two well, different shoppers. Well, I, well, I just an example though. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be any the problem is it could be anything like specifically put in like anti store things in front of our stores or because we have no we couldn't control it. Oh, I see. Yeah, like it could be Don't any shop small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like corporation, corporation. Uh, well, they could push the gun center for every wall. They, anything. That's the problem. They could tour Starbucks <laughs> for So, right now, there are also some dope boards that are in the surrounding area or even the garbage can that have. Yeah, we have advertising now. We don't have control of that either. I know, but what I'm trying to say is it's already in effect. It's already advertising. Oh, in our environment, it's not a community, it's, it's already been happening. Mm -hmm. So the question that I have is, are we going to be able to benefit this as a downtown core, as a merchant, as a retailer, as a professional service? Can this work for our benefit? And also make it look like something new is happening here. You know, are we feeling that some new environment is taking place here? I mean, I don't think it's such a bad, bad idea, but as long as we have a little bit of an influence on certain things, like, you know, you don't want to jump and center and get a good job done. Just what you like. No, I don't think it's different. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. But we we don't know. That's the problem. I'm just joking around. The point is, like, I think it will be something new. My biggest concern, I think, truthfully, is going to be a lot of medals. It's going to be a lot of problems. We'll probably have to know that as well because. You know, this set up to the charge station yeah. on five grand by Market Square. That then last more than a couple of months because they were getting demolished. But they they're paying for it, so that's on them, right? Know. Yeah. And I'm sure they're aware of it if they've done that much research where they know where they would have put ten of them. But I I assume you know, like that's almost more advanced if out of the feet is you're pretty sure Van is gonna happen if they're certain. For sure. Not on our and then sometimes that becomes bad advertising, just like how it's like the front of the new standard of a new washrooms being vandalized and everything. Everyone's like, see, shouldn't have put those in there, right? Out of the conversation standard. Which is like if things are gonna get vandalized, you just shouldn't have them, then what I know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, be, it's it's be in the, I don't know. Sorry. I'm gonna stick to that. Uh Stephen. So what are the municipalities the downtown associations are these involved? So they are, I would say, fairly new at doing these. So they worked a lot in Toronto before, but Toronto has a, a separate uh, contract with a different ad company, not them. So they're not going in Toronto. So they're currently working with Coburg, Port Hope, and Peterborough. So I guess it would be already talked to those people. We found out that was today, this morning, oh, okay. for our meeting. So this is very preliminary stages that we've had this discussion, right? Um, and they're not installed yet. This is like a I got the insight to on this because I sit on the OBIA board with the ED for the Toronto area BIAs, who's friends with them. So I got the first insight. Okay, thank you. Uh, another point. Um, Katie made a really good point to save Kat's life is creating a communication strategy. So that you know what the heck they're doing, and Kat can pick the 10 and we can agree, and she's only got 10, and she doesn't have to worry about the other 15. That she um, I guess I'm in the same place with science. Let's do a science strategy. Screw this until we can have a plan. And, you know, there were some really attractive things that came up in the garbage. Things like some attractive garbage containers. And we got shocked, right? So let's do a plan. And then decide. Like, if these guys are going to be, going to be here next year. Yeah. So anyway, that is a thought that I have. We also do have the ability to see how Cobra Report is actually turned out to be. Yeah. 
David. David, Joe. I'm speaking out of turn because I want to bring this up uh, a little later. But first of all, I think this board wants to congratulate Kat for being uh, being accepted uh, under four four years. <laughs> It's the board acknowledges your input and, and public service and everything like that, so that you know that we know and appreciate it. Second thing I want to bring up, I was going to do a new business, but what we're talking about, I'm, I'm kind of perturbed with the press that we're getting. Uh, the article, first of all, on that half a million dollar washing, which is a fiasco. Uh, I don't like the comments. And, and I have already spoken to Rachel about it. Uh, we have to, I don't know if we need a communications committee, uh, somebody to speak to, uh, and he's a dear friend of mine. I don't like what's coming out of Matt Siskel's mouth. Uh, I don't like the press that we're getting. And I think that we have to sit down with the standard and say, here are some rules. You, you want to get comments from us? You want to get uh, interviews from us with downtown? Then don't paint, paint them negative all the time. You haven't done one thing that I remember that's a real positive. So I think we have to take them to task and indicate that it is our displeasure the way they've been reporting and, and a public uh, awareness of, of uh, more of a PR, good PR job they, for downtown. I, I think this is like for sure something that's worthy yeah. discussion, but, but I was going to say like this should be new business because we're still talking about signs. But I think we should continue this discussion. Oh, no, I just brought up that. Because it, it just, those articles just bother me. Yeah, definitely. But I think, like, I think we all have thoughts on that, for sure. So if we wrap up the, the then I can finish the marketing update, and then... Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but I totally agree. Um, totally agree. Joe? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll add to David's comments under new business. Okay. And uh, the, 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 okay. under the sign... Um, you know, potentially would each uh, business owner have the opportunity to, to say yes or no thank you to the sign on the street in front of the business. But, uh, that, you know, you, 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 yeah. you're going to have two camps. And so you, you'd like to think that you're getting it put next to the guy that said, yeah, I like the activity there. This is this adds to what I'm doing yeah, as opposed to the other. Taking away from a front end, you may have been a lot of effort too. And yeah. Then, congratulations. Now you have neon. Yeah. Yeah. So we we want to know that there be input from the businesses that would be affected in front of them. What about if we just have a Does that mean only platform of advertising that they have? And they can actually incorporate garbage cans that have advertising built in, which kind of gets them the same result, but also helps us direct instantly. Two birds with one stone. Exactly. So what we're thinking, maybe perhaps the percentage when you're advertising the pool would be changed over in the format that might benefit us as well, directly all the day, every day. So if I may, um, in terms of garbage cans, so yes, we have to have products to take in today. Um, in terms of garbage cans, though, the city already works with a, an advertising group for the garbage cans, which are the ones that we've got on our street to be advertising. And I would probably say if we want more of that style in the city, in fact, we've already tried to fix a couple of those issues, but those are big fixes. So just because it's already an agreement there, we might as well keep the same infrastructure as opposed to have different types. Is it possible to open up the maybe for like a coal? Garbage can situation with the advertising. Why do you think garbage can for the thing? Because garbage cans that we have right now are terrible. Oh, that's terrible. No, because yeah. you see some of them, they actually look very attractive. Like the radio center gateway going in by me, by us, and it's clean, it's nice. Some advertising on there, a local business guy, you know, the city wants to It's positioned nicely, it's clean, it's easy for the people to get access to open it up, they dump it. Or some of you guys that can see them across the street when they see them Thursday, they really have to lift that stuff and it's heavy. So I'm just again aesthetically it looks nice. Also it's an advertising content. 
I think that goes back to the signage idea to have a strategy, like what find out what our needs or our wants are for signage and be able to incorporate that in like a because I like I think that it's there's more beyond these digital yeah. and design, design, design. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to make the place the best. Yeah, those printing Right. Yeah, good. Awesome. Yeah, let's get some data. Do you All right. Uh, is there anything else in the market? Yeah. Oh, I should say too, if anyone can I any more people for either of the committees? There, there is some money. Yeah, if anyone's interested in joining either the 50th anniversary subcommittee um, or the communication strategy subcommittee, um, that would be really good. Love your input. How often is the 50th anniversary subcommittee? Because I just quit two days. How often? I don't know. We don't know. Oh, yes. For at least for the top, you know, right? Because I did the 50th anniversary, we'll start joining that. Just be Monday to Monday p.m. And the second line, the 50th anniversary, we're still waiting to hear back from events. You should know this Tuesday. Where are next Tuesday? But how do you want to know? In that case, and the 50th. Yeah. Uh, we're on to governments. Sure, yeah, just really quick. Um, we're currently working through that committee on uh, creating a board matrix policy. And the board communications policy. So hopefully we'll be able to have something to bring back. Okay. All right. Uh, on to new business then. So we wanted to comment more. Yeah, if we could bring that up again. Uh, I don't know if it's a public relations committee. I just don't like the press that we've been getting lately. Uh, either we have to sit down with that. Uh, I think the because the standard is they don't even have offices here anymore. Uh, we have to be very, very firm with them that, uh, in my opinion, uh, if they continue to report the way they reported, uh, we're getting no information. And, and uh, I think we have to make a point of our displeasure with what's been happening through the standard. And uh, we want some, some good features. So. Um, um, Sarah, actually, I guess Sarah first, actually, because she's the one. Sarah, did you? I don't know. Um, so I agree with you, definitely. I think that there is a lot of things that have been painted in such a negative light and they're not even realistic. Um, there are pockets of those things happening in the downtown, but the way that one of the several articles, which is one of the standards that I'm sure we're all talking about, um, really made it sound like our streets are combined with people fornicating and and that's not a reality. That's not what it looks like downtown. And I I contacted the mayor and I sat down and I talked about this. And um I mean his uh what he had to say to me was that they plucked all the the positive out of what I said and ran with the negative. But Alan Benner, who is the individual who wrote this article, has been doing this for a very long time. He has been painting our city, not just our downtown core, our entire city as a disgusting health cake. And it's not factual. And it's a smear campaign. And I am so livid about it. And I will say that since that article came out and several subsequent articles, um, it's slowed right down, like to a screeching halt downtown. And it's not sustainable for a lot of businesses. And that's what I said to Matt. I said it's like, it's bad for business. This is awful for business. And he said that, um, you know, Walter never said anything and that something needs to be said and it's, it's accomplishing something. But at the same time, it's still not a reality. It's not a realistic look at what our lives are like downtown. Well, then I think we better speak to the editor because the above the reporting and sit down and say, here's a fact of life. Here's what you've been doing to our downtown. Uh, and, and 
tell them what we want to do without causing the way. Uh, or they won't get our cooperation for anything. Because they're not even here anymore. Yeah. Well, Jim, they, they, um, uh, you know, back in history when when uh, you know, the people downtown felt that the uh, one-way streets were were uh, the big part of the problem that uh, the, the traffic moving too quickly and there was a vast consensus that two-way traffic would uh, allow for great investment in the downtown better future. Um, you know, the uh, city council and senior staff and uh, the standard were kind of uh, running the show and uh, the wrong message is coming out. And, and uh, the message was that it's not attainable because it's going to cost a million dollars for streets to two-way traffic. And, uh, and, and so here we are how many years later and we have nearly 400 million in, in public money being invested and, and probably followed by more than that in private sector investment with uh, the three condo towers to go through and some more. So, you know, a million dollars of cost. So it was, uh, it was suggested that uh, we get together and, uh, you know, the, the standard back then when they were here, you could you could book yourself in for an editorial meeting and you could sit down and you could get the real message across and have the people at the table that would uh, listen and, you know, give you at least a, a fair shot at uh, getting the, the, the correct message out and that did make a difference. And then we got everybody in the downtown to run two big spreads of the standard, saying we were downtown. That didn't hurt either. You heard it first. Yeah, yeah, kind of responding. So um, I will just say it's really hard to cut, you know, to kind of go to reporters or the standard and say, we don't like what you're doing, you're not showing us a good light, we're cutting you off because. That will back up there. It's a good time. Um, so what we need to do is basically flood it the other way, kind of like what Joe was saying, which is what Kat does. And I will give Kat tons of credit. The amount of time and effort she puts into building relationships with local reporters, you may see we have some favorites who really do do positive news stories. Abby Little is one of them, who is a fantastic reporter that always speaks good for the downtown. Abby, Sorry, Abigail Green, <laughs> not little, previous person. Um, and that's through a relationship with Kat that she has built over these years. So, um, and you know, Kat has done a ton of training. Um, at the last Rocky conference, she did a half day training on public relations specifically to learn the best tricks and how to make sure we get those positive messages out. I'll be honest, we're never going to stop sensational stories from going out. What we need to stop or what we need to do is, is flood it the other way and educate those who are are maybe broadcasting those sensational stories to say, can you please be careful with what words you use and how you say it? Because at the end of the day, if somebody said, you know, downtown dirty, you know a reporter is going to flip that say, downtown is the dirtiest place in the world, right? So it's a story. You, need, you need to be careful with you say because your reporters will always make it so it sells at the end of the day. So we just have to be careful with the messaging that's going out. And I'm a mayor too, and I'm going to be hunting for another public meeting with several different people um, to talk about okay, if we identify this issue, what are we doing to fix this issue? Because he said it himself at that meeting where the reporter was that he's getting asked questions and doesn't have any answers. Well, I have a bunch of answers right here. For example, fix city infrastructure. Start with yourselves first. So, and a whole bunch of other things that I will be going to the mayor to say, you want to fix these issues, just like CIP. So the CIP is up for discussion this, um, two weeks ago, I think now. Um, so I presented on the CIP to say, you need to support, you've just identified there's issues down there. You want to help address those issues and support CIP funding for these new developments because it's the only way we're flipping it. And they passed. So I think we need to make sure that we're we're kind of giving the solutions, um, and that's where I, I'm focusing on. I, I was being a little facetious when I said Okay. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sound I wanted to make the point that, I to, that uh, uh, something has to be done. In, 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 in a, in a, that's right, in a, in a positive way. Um, so David, but this, this one part keeps on doing it, keeps on right. doing it. So, uh, my, Katie? Yeah. 
Amy. Thank you. Um, my background is also in public relations. Um, so I would say too that I watched an interview with um, Mayor Cisco where he was speaking on CHCH. And I think what happened was he, Mayor Cisco was trying to make a point calling on the provincial government that there is like a housing crisis. We have um, a, like issues with mental health, issues with not being able to access like um, safe housing and safe all of those things. And that was where he's going with it is that we have populations that are in distress right now. And if we were taking proper care of our community, these things would not be happening. So it, he, he was not meaning to paint downtown as negative light. He was saying, look, we need help. Like this, there's clearly something wrong at a, a governmental level that's responsible for these things, that these issues are increasing through COVID. So I, I agree with Rachel that like, instead of not wanting to play ball, it's reframing this, saying like, yeah, you know what? Maybe sometimes we do run into these issues downtown, but we as business owners, we as BIA, want to put pressure on there being solutions to the root of these problems, not just making them not visible anymore. Because the thing with the downtown core is that people don't want to come to their visible issues. They can go to Penn and they don't see these visible issues, but it doesn't mean they're not part of our community and they're not going on. Um, so it's it's partially optics, but I think it's also partially like at the root of the cause of what's creating these problems in the first place. Okay, so I mean, I think we all know from the moment through COVID that like media can paint a pretty bad picture and it's like what's reality, what's not reality. I think we all are in that sense. I do think there's a generation that still reads the paper that I got phone calls from saying, can't do downtown, what's really happening downtown? But I mean, I don't know if it's that some of the bigger problems. Like, I mean, there's streets that are like closed and people don't know how to get to them, so they're confused. So they do go elsewhere, right? So I think we're struggling with that. In a couple of years, there's gonna be so many people down here, let's bring it. But I do think that Kat, you're doing a great job on like social media, like showing these pictures of downtown that are like breathtaking. And so would it be something for us to not only even with words, but even with pictures, in the standard, if we have some marketing dollars, even businesses, like say for me, maybe say like, I put an ad in the standard because I don't even think of that in the paper anymore. But clearly if we're getting that much publicity of like downtown poor places saying, you know, I'm celebrating my 81 downtown and I love it and like showing little pieces of the downtown why I live there. So kind of putting us into motion as well. of saying, do we have any marketing dollars to show pictures of the beautiful downtown that it actually is? Or like how old the streets are when we have games or I mean downtown is pretty beautiful, but I mean there's little pockets that, that make it beautiful and that is so diverse. And some people are still very scared of that, but it's like it's not as scary when you're down here, but it's just like COVID in general, right? People are at home, what's happening outside, but if you're outside, you're like, no, not that. Right? So it ends up like showing different pictures versus saying this person's bad that we just look like we're fighting off somebody. And I think the, thing, the point is that, like there are a lot of those stories in that do even get picked up by media. They're just not the popular. You're right. They just don't generate the same discussion. You're that always the Yeah. David, do you have No, I'll just say a like, quote my famous wife when she says, don't give me problems for the solutions. And, and it is a public relations background. That, that's what we need. That's what you paint the picture, you know, to take a take a look at the uh, White House press secretary or even somebody from uh, Queens Park. They're uh, professionally prepared to come out and give the positive. But that's what but it doesn't necessarily need to be positive. I think like what's being discussed is like, yes, we have homelessness issue. We have like people that are struggling. So instead of like, oh, this, we're beautiful all the time. It's like, hey, we are business owners downtown and we see unhoused people every day who need help. Um, can we get solutions for this? It doesn't make our downtown dirty or bad or for, for, for reasons people shouldn't come here. It's like, we have an opportunity to voice that now because it is true. And it's not the only reality that we have and it doesn't stop people from coming down here, but it does exist. Yeah, no, there are people that know how to handle it. That's what I'm saying. I, there like, is the correct verbiage, is what you're yeah, saying, yeah. as opposed to me saying something emotionally and you saying it like with a minute or two. 
Yeah, and like yeah. that. Right. Very true. And like painting it only one way. <laughs> also, do you have an opportunity coming up with block party coming in? We have you know, just portrayed downtown as a place of events and culture and substance. And even in the soils coming up, and um, one an article came out about that recently. There's probably more coverage coming out. That's like a positive good thing, but it won't elicit the same reaction as this coverage has. Cat, one second. Yeah. What, what do I suggest? What I, Cat has had her hand up. I'm not okay. I just want to share a new chat to everyone who mentioned our article, uh, whether it's radio, TV, or what's with us. Um, we probably get 10 to 15 mentions a week. And um, just this week or last week alone, we had five positive articles. Sometimes the articles are not positive or negative, it's just a base piece. Um, but they are positive articles that are highlighting community members in our downtown or new businesses that just opened or a rally that just happened that was a positive impact. So we, we do quite regularly have the stories going out. Like you said, it's just not necessarily that's all people get excited about. Um, but if you notice in our BIA newsletters, we've been trying to add them so that every time you get your newsletter each week, there's a list of the articles at the bottom. But if you see something on your channel, share it on your own channels. Uh, please do. But uh, there is a lot of still a good press. I just want to highlight that. Yeah. Is it better uh, to get our newsletters? I'm sorry? Is it better to get our newsletters? I, I know our media relations are as well, but I can double check it. Okay. You got Kitty then? Um, if we're in to answer your question. So I think, like, if we don't necessarily need to combat a bad news story with a good news story because the good news stories are happening, what we can do is take advantage of the fact that, like, this bad news story that came out here, the, the kernels of truth in it, which are, we are experiencing a lot of those problems and it's hurting community members, it's hurting us. It's just, there's like a, there's something wrong there. So it's an opportunity for us to express how we feel about those issues um, and about what we think the solutions are for. But it depends on whether or not we want to like have a shared BIA. Yeah. That part is a problem. Yep. Communication specialist. Yeah. What do you recommend? So, you know, if I might, you know, like you're putting her on the spot. She's talking big picture and you're talking microscopic. You know, let her. I was asking her directly. I did need your opinion. I did need your opinion. I, so please. I can answer it. Um, so, it would, you're asking me what I think are official, yeah, what are official board. Um, Day it should be on on these issues. Right. I think that that is that shouldn't be up to me personally. Like I think that that would require discussion and messaging amongst us as a board because it, each of us individually as uh, business owners may have different opinions on what the solutions are. But I think what we collectively can say as a board, as some, as a board that's representing all of our downtown core, is that we acknowledge that our downtown has these issues that are more visible, but that does not mean they're not happening other places. And the visibility of it actually just strengthens the position that they need more resources in this area. Well, that's, that's, that's the kind of path that helps school. Yeah. More resources for the certain maybe provincial help or certain exactly. our way yeah. that can we well, already see that. Yeah. Secondly, exactly. it was the solution to have to get this thing done. Exactly. And I think that, but that's what I'm saying is these articles are out there. I really don't think Mayor Cisco, Mayor Cisco was trying to do the same thing with advocating, advocating saying we need more resources to help with these issues. It's a solid guy. Yes. Yeah. And it was just, yep. it was taken, not, I don't even think it was taken out of context. I think it was taken yep. as it was, and, uh, but we need to be framing it. All right, solid guy. And like I said, we're supporting it. I got Amy and then David. I think that as business owners, we have to start seeing the downtown differently. We have to, I noticed that my image of downtown might have been different five years than what it is now. And I think you have to start really loving your downtown. The reason why I say that is because people that are coming in our store and we're fearful of saying horrible things, they're not going to come and look at other 
they may just go to your store and they, they're fearful. We have to start walking down the streets and saying, because like, I've changed. I've seen things. I've gone to those like addiction um, meetings and, and starting to talk to people that are on the streets and being like, hey, and looking at them, like my husband even said to me, look at them, my kids, look at them as your son or your daughter. Totally different from what I looked at. I walked down the street and I saw them differently and I started falling back in love with my downtown. It changed the way I looked at it. And when people say it, I'm like, you know what? I love it because it is imperfect. I love it because downtown is not supposed to be perfect. We're supposed to have people that we're feeding, we're talking to, and we're loving. And then that brings the attraction. So when someone comes in my street and they're like, oh, this is fearful, they like, no, are you kidding? I'm not going to hurt you. They're just going to love on you. You know, don't hand them money, maybe hand them a coffee. And they're like, oh, they see it differently because I'm seeing it differently. That was like my own big thing. Another thing, superficially, I was thinking like Instagramable people. I am not in the world of marketing and business. They're putting in influencers. Mm -hmm. Coming down to some of our big block parties, we had any little cash with an influencer and then take a picture in the standard all of a sudden. And I'll tell you something, I had one influencer wear a pair of Uggs. I didn't pay for them, Uggs did, and I sold a style within a second, and it was the ugliest Uggs. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, the influencers are your marketer. Pat and I have spoken about that. Like, and that's kind of where the strategy comes in as well, is to be able to put energy for that sorry. David? Sir. <laughs> Points well taken. I think this has been a good discussion. Uh, I would recommend that it be a, a, an item uh, on the executive, start up the executive committee, formulate some sort of policy, uh, some ideas. Uh, I, I, not in the public relations business, there's a lot of people that, that can help, even with our board and people downtown. So I would suggest that the start. Uh, I would recommend that the executive committee start exploring uh, different ways and ideas and then, then bring it back to the board for uh, uh, for assistance and, and approval. So, in yeah. case, what is it? And just kind of on what Amy was saying, I totally agree. Like, we need to fall in love with our downtown again. And I really think that one of the main points that I to Matt Lisko about was that people are suffering and they're struggling and that's happening everywhere. It's not just in this municipality, it's happening everywhere and it's something that needs to be addressed. But it's okay because it's good that we see this because if they're constantly swept under the rug and down of our eye line, they're never going to get help and we're never going to realize how deep they need help. So the fact that we can see this and this is visible, it gives us the understanding and compassion that he was talking about. And like it makes us, it motivates us to get involved and solve these problems and help these people in a deep and meaningful way and not just. It's a pretty serious situation. I yeah. I drive around in the evenings pretty good day. It's, it's multiplied by a threefold, fourfold. I'll tell you, it's, it's not good. Uh, last Sorry. point. Last point, Stephen. So, building on what Sarah and Amy said, and I know people volunteer on many things to help things, but one way I, I just wondered about the breakfast program every morning at St. George's um, is an opportunity for people to volunteer. And let me tell you, you get to know the people downtown very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, maybe you have employees, or maybe I, I have. I just kind of came up now because I'm hearing your perspective is really very refreshing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that you know maybe if you if we they're always looking for volunteers. They have teams. The teams are you know from a club, church, organization. But they're you know BIA could have a team once a month. You go in the morning. You're there from four to seven until nine o'clock. You know, that's one option, or maybe there are individuals within our, our environment that would be prepared to say, oh, I'll go help someone. Uh, something yeah. So let's just talk, oh, moving on kind of uh, You get to know the people quite quickly. I'm sure you guys know. And I think people have a misconception on who comes for dinner and breakfast. Exactly. It's not just who you may think. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. People come there for work. 
Watch it. Everybody like, needs somebody, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. a great compassion focused strategy to yeah, really focus exactly. on the people we have yeah. in town who's authentically here and what's going on. It's a great idea. Absolutely. And I think words speak volumes. If you're not fearful, someone else. It's just like, you know, you're on an airplane. Who are you going to look at? You're going to look at the stewards to see if they're okay. Yeah, right? So if you're, if you're driving your downtown and you're cool and you're loving it, they're going to love it too. Yeah. And without having to pretend that, like, no, it's all shiny and beautiful here. Like, yeah, you know, these are people who need help and we're part of their community. They're part of ours. Like who's whose family doesn't have issues, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, this is our family and yeah. we have issues. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do we have anything else before we have a computer drink? Sorry, I just have a couple quick ones. Just want to let everybody know that we've worked closely with the St. Catherine's Museum and we are bringing four walking tours to the downtown through July and August. Um, and we do have a patio workshop coming up on June 5th at 10 a.m. that will be by Zoom and that will be going out shortly to or your restaurants to come. And that is motion to adjourn. One, two. All right, friends, let's get the hell out of here. Okay.